Welcome back, everyone, to an exciting episode of Kicking It with Gab and Chooch. I am Gab. And I am Chooch. Back with another episode, reintroducing our awards of the week. They are so back. Starting off with Chooch's Banger of the Week. Banger of the Week. Nobody. No one deserves it. Every goal is awful. Every single one of them. My honorable <laughs> mention definitely was a disallowed goal. That was, was going to be a banger. That was a banger. If that goal sounded, that was a banger. As a free kick from way out, Bernardo Silva-esque in the Champions League. Um, I mean, the closest banger was Mateo Kovacic for sure. I mean, goalkeeper deflected it right off the post. So, I mean, hits the post, hits the crossbar. I consider it a banger. But, you know, I don't know. Not really too many insane goals. Yeah, like you. <laughs> uh, he did. He did not celebrate though. So there you go. <clears throat> Regardless, uh, moving on to Star Boy of the Week. I thought there was a couple. It was a couple of decent ones. Of course, I'm a little biased. I'm gonna go Rico Lewis. Absolutely stellar performance at right back. <laughs> stellar. I don't know about that. Uh, he cooked. You got anyone in mind? Star Boy of the Week. Star Boy. You know what? I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to give it to Sokka. <laughs> Sokka played really good. I'm going to give him Crazy. Go on the assist. Crazy. I'm going to give it to him. Huh? One second, Xerxes, because he scored on his debut. Uh, you know, John Duran. John Duran. He was linked to Chelsea. To shout. Goal. Yeah. Also linked to West Ham. Yeah, I'm going Rico Lewis, first and foremost. Just thought, I mean, wow. Just wow. Obviously a little biased. <laughs> <laughs> that brings us into our recap. Friday's game, we had Manchester United versus Fulham in a 1-0 win for Man United. As Chooch mentioned a minute ago, Xerxes. Did get the debut goal to seal it in a game that I felt was maybe a little bit undeserved from United. Maybe just a bit. I agree. Um, we mentioned it. We, we felt like this game was going to be an upset. Fulham was was going to sneak away with it. And they, they literally took until the 87th minute for Xerxes to come on. Score goal. Garnacho had an absolute oh my. stinker. Yeah. That freak. Oh, my God. He got the assist on this goal, but oh, my God. What he, everyone kept talking about the shot that he missed. The wide open. Absolutely dragged it wide to the right. Yeah. That was that, that one was awful for sure. <clears throat> um, Emil Smith-Rowe felt like he really didn't do much. He was uh, mm. at first like he got a couple touches in the beginning. I was like, okay, yeah, look, he's looking good. He's gonna be the facilitator, but didn't really do too much. Um, Iwobi had some good chances. I felt like they had a couple really good chances, just one pass away from scoring a goal. Fulham, that is. Uh, but I mean, United still. I mean, week one. We always say don't judge it off week one, but I mean, Never. we saw quite a few of the bigger teams look really, really good in week one and deal with the lower quality team fairly easy. And United definitely wasn't one of them. So moving on to our Saturday games, that's the main majority of the slate there. Saturday, we had Ipswich versus Liverpool really early for us, 4.30 in the morning. I just caught the extended highlights of that one. Um, personally, I mean... Liverpool, uh, I'm a little worried. I mean, week one, we kind of knew. We saw in the preseason a bit the way they've been playing a lot differently, but it, it seems to suit them. They seem to be taking it well. They seem to have the quality to do it. It's almost like a lot of passing, but when they play that initial ball from the center back all the way to a winger or a striker, and they can maintain that first touch and pass the ball backwards for another one, I mean, it's it's just quality for sure. Slot ball, as they call it. Um, but definitely, I think, I mean, they get the win 2-0 versus Ipswich at Ipswich home. Nothing different there. 
brilliant display for sure. Yeah, uh, Mo Salah once again keeps his streak alive of scoring on the debut, and he got yeah. the assist. New haircut. New haircut. New year, new him. <laughs> Uh, we did. We saw Jota get the start over Darwin Nunez. Wow. No, no. Uh, I mean, it's not necessarily a major surprise. Nunez was definitely a lot off the bench uh, last season, um, and he had a heavy summer for sure with Uruguay. And you know, it's nothing, uh, nothing too crazy there. Uh, didn't see any outstanding center back pairing. Uh, Kwanzaa, who's been stellar, you know, started the match. Midfield was all right. Graven Birch for me getting the start. I mean that's that's definitely different. You know, Endo was really big last season. Uh, Cody Gakpo was heavily involved last season in the midfield, but Graven Birch getting in there definitely liked it. Obviously McAllister and Super Sly uh, in there as well. But weirdly used subs, I'd say. I mean Harvey Elliott doesn't touch the field. Darwin Nunes doesn't touch the field. Endo doesn't touch the field. Uh, just a little bit of a weird one for me, for sure. But Cody Gakpo got on. Excellent. Connor Bradley. Granate. Nothing else. Too surprising there. <clears throat> see. Oh, Calvin Phillips rode the bench again. Nothing new. <laughs> I mean, I, I said it in the last one anyway. You know, he got there maybe two days before the game. I didn't assume he was going to play much, if at all. <clears throat> Let's see. Moving into our next one, we had Arsenal versus Wolves. As Chooch said, Bakayo Saka, man of the match, goal and an assist. Um, nothing surprising there. Uh, you know, stick with their dynamic duo at center backs, uh, Gabriel and William William Saliba. Uh, but we did see Jury and Timber come on as well. Uh, didn't see Califori. Come on, at all as well. Jorginho goes unused. Uh, and Kiatia goes unused. Um, but yeah, I mean, Kai Havertz gets a goal. Former Chelsea man himself. What do you think about that? <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> looking back, Martinelli <laughs> gets a start with Saka. And Havertz up top. Declan Rice. Martin Odegaard, Thomas Partey gets the start. A little bit different there as well. Uh, we also saw Zinchenko as usual and Ben White as usual. Let's see. I think uh, Wolves definitely have dogs, but they're missing that player up top for sure. Uh, we saw Huang Hee Chan last season did extremely well. Uh, Cunha didn't come on till late, 57th minute. Not too late, but still definitely an impact player. I think uh, he needs to be starting. And Mario Lamina, always good, always tough. Poor display from Wolves, though. Yeah, it really sucks seeing their best player leave. Yeah. Especially. Terrible haircut he's got, cool. by the way. <laughs> crucial. He was crucial to that Wolves team. None of these guys. Yeah. Uh, hopefully they bring someone in to replace him. Yeah. Well, let's see. We are moving into our next Saturday game, Everton Brighton, with a shocker, in my opinion. At Goodison, Park. at Goodison Park. I think I had predicted Everton to get this one, like a 2 1, I believe. Uh, but, I mean, Danny Welbeck played out. Danny Welbeck dollar. was insane, yeah. So, I, was watching, I was watching the uh, Tottenham game a little bit earlier. Commentators were saying, wow. Danny Welbeck's going to get called up by England. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> no, but for reals, I mean, he played insanely well for the first match day. Um, but Toma comes back after a long injury last season, tough season, scores a goal. Um, Matoma, or I'm sorry, uh, Jao Pedro didn't really do too much, got subbed off, uh, but that's one name to look for as well. Lewis Dunk, always excellent. James Milner, I mean, Record-breaking season for him to start again for for another club. Uh, big, big time for sure. <clears throat> um, let's have a look. Everton, I mean, you're, you know. Just a, it, just a mess for them. Neil Mupe did not play once. No, I, didn't, didn't I think he's a, 
as much as he is a troll, he's a good, good player for sure. Calvert Lewin played or started, got subbed off. Decore subbed off. Um, Ashley Young got the red card, you know, quite a bit into the second half, 66th minute. So that was definitely a huge one for them. But I mean, yeah, once that part, Brighton absolutely dominated. 61% possession, five shots on target to Everton's one. I mean, they just absolutely dominated the game for sure. Yeah, <clears throat> didn't see Lindstrom come in, you know, the, the big signing they got on loan. Now he didn't get subbed on at all. So, yeah. That brings me also to uh, Evan Ferguson is still not on the team sheet as his injury. Let's see, you know, that. That was one that I was interested in. Let's see. Let's see if it has an update. No. no update. Just says still says timetable unknown. Well, Evan Ferguson definitely want to watch out. Hat trick in last season at 18 years old, not even in the squad. But Danny Welbeck has been absolutely stellar so far. Quite a bit of red cards. Quite a bit yeah. of red cards this first uh, day, first match day out. Uh, Newcastle, Southampton, get the one they'll win. Red card for Fabian Scher in the 28th minute. Absolutely weird. I mean, Brereton Diaz also got a yellow for the same incident. Um, just for Jolinton to still be able to get that goal, for Newcastle to still be able to get that goal, uh, you know, after the fact is pretty good. It was a stoppage time goal and at, just at half. Uh, 22% possession from Newcastle, though Southampton definitely had the chances and the opportunities. Newcastle had three shots, one on target. Southampton, 19 shots and four on target and still goalless. Oh, we saw a bit of Cameron Archer come in late in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cameron, uh, man. A bit odd for me, for sure. Uh, I really thought he was going to stay at Aston Villa. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, gets the late loan, or actually, I think it was a permanent transfer. Permanent, yeah, yeah. Permanent. It was looking like he was going to be sent on loan and then permanent transfer. Uh, you know, Brereton Diaz as well. Um, I mean, he was with Sheffield United last season as well. Uh, gets the permanent move. So, two guys that have played well with each other before. <clears throat> um, we'll see what happens there. But nothing surprising from the starting lineups of Newcastle. I mean, you'll have, yeah, I mean, he had a long, so he had a long summer though. So, I mean, for me, that's not too big of a difference. Livermento's excellent. Lewis Hall is excellent. They just have a he, really solid defense. I think. So he, anyway. did, he did get dropped as captain. Uh, did he? Yeah. The, well, Eddie Howe said that Bruno Gamares will be the captain. for. Oh, yeah, I did see that. I did see that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's been links to Trippier headed out as well. Um, Summer wasn't really too much because he got a lot of England stuff going on. Uh, But, you know, next two weeks, I think Sandro Tonali misses next week. It'll be the 28th. Let me check the calendar. So he'd miss this next weekend, and he'd be eligible for match day three for Newcastle. So I expect him to be in there. Sean Longstaff got the start. I expect him to replace him easily. Um, but, yeah, Jacob Murphy's been excellent. Anthony Gordon's been excellent. Alexander Isak, of course, always a stellar, uh, but no goals from any of them. And Nick Pope returns after a long, long injury. Yeah. Which is, you know, it makes sense, but Dubraka really did play good last season. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he's still there, surprisingly. He wasn't taken away by any clubs. Let's see. Next game was the Forest Bournemouth game. Quite, I, I actually watched a bit of that game. Uh, wasn't as one sided maybe as I thought it would be. I I think well, you and I both said Bournemouth really had chances of being relegated without Solanke, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Semen has been in the right places at the right time. Uh, Tavernier was been what played excellent. Um, I don't know. They held their own. They held their own for sure. Definitely uh, changed my mind a little bit. I uh, had an awful injury from Danilo, who just shattered what looked like his ankle. 
Um, Hopefully he gets back soon. I haven't seen any update on that. But yeah, definitely. I mean, that was definitely horrid. Chris Wood gets the goal off of a rebound from uh can't remember who put who tried to put it in the first time. I think it was Ryan Yates and then uh, and then Chris Wood rebound. But definitely nothing. I mean, nothing from Hudson Odoi, nothing from Ilonga really. Gibbs White was quiet. Uh Sangare plays well. I think Sangare could go to a bigger club or I felt like the I felt after watching the Leicester game today, I, I felt like they could use him. They have Ndidi already, but I don't know. I, something about Sangare. Um, Willy Bolly loved memes. Loved the <laughs> Willy Bolly memes. Seeing a bunch of them after the weekend. But 1-1 one, one draw. Uh, 86 a minute tap in after a poor clearance. Well, not even a poor clearance. It's just a, a clearance that bounced off their own player and then Semenyo was in the right place at the right time. Checking in with West Ham and Aston Villa. I had higher hopes for West Ham, for sure. 1-2 loss. I said West Ham, I thought, could maybe be up there with Aston Villa and maybe beat them out. But after seeing this, no real chances. Hugely created. Um, Amadou Onana got it going. Super quick. Yeah, beautiful head. Yeah, Yeah, man. Uh, That was a good header. Right off the bat. Got me jumpy. I was like, oh, whoa. Kind of like a smack in the mouth right off the bat. Uh, I thought Morgan Rogers played extremely well. You know what? That was one of my other Starboy shouts. Morgan Rogers dictated play. Played extremely well, in my opinion. Quiet night from Molly Watkins. Quiet night from uh, <clears throat> from your boy, uh, Jared Bowen. Oh, yeah, my, you know... Michael Antonio, he's getting old. He's he's a he's a second striker for sure. Uh, Nicholas Full Creek, I think I think he will get the start next week. Uh, just after being a little bit more in there and being able to, you know, get in more trainings and get a feel for how they play, I think Michael Antonio will be a stellar, stellar, you know, backup. Uh, yeah. Juan Bissaka got really late. Got there really late. Didn't expect him to play. He didn't. Yeah. Uh, definitely a little shocked to see Ward Prowse not in the starting lineup for Guido Rodriguez, but I mean, they feel like they need a more defensive midfielder with Edson Alvarez still out. Uh, They're saying, I think, I think he could be out till like a match day six. Don't change the injury still covering. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and then on Aston Villa side, I mean, just just fantastic. I mean, I felt like they played insanely well. They didn't have a majority of the possession, but, you know, each team had three shots on target. I thought Villas were a little bit more quality. They had 14 shots to 15 Aston Villas. Um, I mean, nothing too, nothing too insane, but I just felt that Villa made a lot more of their opportunities count and got a, let, a lot better looks. Uh, for sure as well. Yuri Telemans always have high standings for him. I think I think Villa's midfield is actually quite insane. A lot of unreal names. Um, we didn't even see Ross Barkley get in. Yeah, Ross Barkley didn't touch the field. Um, Diego Carlos potentially could be headed out. Uh, John... John Duran got in, scored the game-winning goal just after being linked to West Ham. Posted on his Instagram story the hammer already, uh, but he comes back and wins it against them and says that he's staying. He did the I'm staying celebration, so that was pretty hilarious. Um, I mean that guy John Duran has been unreal. He's been linked to Chelsea. He's been linked to West Ham. He's been linked to other places. This guy was playing in the MLS like two seasons ago. That's quite unreal. Now he's just unbelievable. Uh, uh, let's see here. Pal Torres played as well. That was a little bit of a shocker for me. I'm surprised. Um, didn't have a great run at it last season. Plays a lot of left back too, so you know, good for him. Uh, but yeah, definitely on Amadu Anana made a name for himself. Match day one. Ollie Watkins got off to a slow start last season as well. I mean, we know he'll be back. We know he could score. 
Ian Madsen touched the field. That's good to see as well. Uh, I think he came on for Leon Bailey or John McGinn, one of the two. I don't know. You know what? He might have came on for Matty Cash. Either way, let's have a look here at our – that was the final match for our Saturday. Let's see. I'm looking to our Sunday games. Yeah, let's see. Brentford 2, Crystal Palace 1, and what people should have thought should a minimum be 2-2. Two, two. Uh, definitely a, you know, the free kick taken back from some penalty issue that no one saw. Uh, except the referees and VAR. But regardless, Dean Henderson always does pretty well. Uh, maybe one of the keepers of the future. Um for England. Uh, Mark Gay, he did get the start as well, even with the transfer rumors. So not a little bit surprised there for sure. Uh, Adam Morton got the start as well. You know, good on him. Eze played fantastic again. Man of the match, in, despite the loss. Uh, Jean-Philippe Meteta thought he would have had a little bit of a bigger impact coming off the games he's been playing. And I'm actually surprised he started a bit. Because the yeah. did not this end. This is just come back from the Olympics. Yeah. But yeah, he only played a half and then got subbed off. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Jordan AU came in. Uh, let's see. Jordan AU played really well last season. Sam Johnstone get, doesn't get the start. That, that That's a bit of a weird one to me. Dean Henderson. I mean, Dean Henderson is excellent. Sam Johnstone always gets in the England squad. So probably just preference there. No Tony in the squad at all. <clears throat> yeah. They said it was. Uh, they were just felt safer to leave him out of the squad entirely with some uh, movement around him. Nothing too, too crazy there. Um, I mean, it's understandable. You don't want him to get injured before you're about to sell him or whatnot. Uh, but, I mean, good quality goal from Mbuemo. I mean, they kind of kind of a little bit of a chip on your shoulder to play without your best player, even though he can play. And, uh, I mean, they got the win. Mbuemo scored a good one. Really, really good one. Uh, and then Wissa, right place, right time, more so. Um, but, yeah, I mean, good goals from Brentford. I'm surprised as well. I mean, we also predicted them as a potential relegation. But, I mean, they've shown some quality, especially against a good quality pa- Palace team. Let's see. Ben Mee got on, too, 90th minute. God, I love Ben Mee. Ben Mee. Yeah, it's quite hilarious. Uh, Fabio Cavallo only played a few minutes as well. Um, nothing too much there. Lewis Potter as well. Back to let's go back to our match of the week: Chelsea versus Man City. Man of the match: Erling Holland, as voted by the peers. Um, definitely a different uh, look for me for Chelsea. Not a lineup I was expecting. I mean, Kukurea. Obvious lock, Malagusto, obvious lock to me, but the center back pairing was a little bit odd. Uh, and Wesley Fofana hadn't really played much in ever uh, since he's been there. So to get the start is quite crazy. I thought the you know the, the, the biggest shocker for me was probably Levi Cowell with the number six jersey, not even I mean, disgusting to give away your legends kit number that easily. Ugh, disgusting. Anyway. <laughs> Enzo Fernandez starts in the midfield with Moises Caicedo and Rami Olavia. Different, different expectation for me as well. Uh, didn't expect Lavia to be on. He did well, come off. Played really good. In, in yeah, my he, opinion. Our, yeah. I think he was a standout player out of everyone. Yeah, definitely played really well. Uh, he gets to start with Nkuku, Cole Palmer, and Nico Jackson up top. Didn't expect Nkuku maybe so much on the left. Uh, was kind of expecting him to start at like a cam in the midfield. And then I probably also would have expected Drewsbury Hall to get the start just because he's been with Enzo for a while and probably would be best suited to implement the way he's trying to play. Um, I mean, we could talk on and on about lineup changes. I mean... So many players. I mean, you got a full bench. You got so many players you could leave out. Pedro Neto came on, didn't do much. Mark Gui, Gui came on, didn't really do much. Drewsbury Hall, love the way Drewsbury Hall plays always. 
Love him as a player. I thought he did really well when he came on. Moedrick untouched. I really thought Batty Shell Cole, Cole Will would have been the center back pairing they went with. Um, and, yeah, I mean, just I don't know where to go with the squad. I, I don't even know that bloke that came on at left back. <laughs> Renato Viega. Yeah, didn't know him at all. Uh, but, I mean, this everybody's going crazy on Chelsea right now. All the pundits, everyone's going crazy. Maybe the fans. I'll but, I mean, them. You got it. Yeah, you definitely. I mean, they always say not to judge a squad by their match day one. I mean, I do understand like how much talent they have. Takes time to figure it out. This is why I said Pochettino should have stayed. You know, he already had rapport. Maybe they don't make a million signings. You know, it just seems like the guys that were like the Moidrix, who was so bought in by Pochettino. Um, you know, it's going to miss out because Pedro Neto's in now. Noni Madueke is killing it. I mean, Noni Madueke. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Those two guys, I mean, Madueke, I think he was coming really into his own. Looked like he's going to be a star. And then, you know, your coach is gone. Don't even see the field. To I mean, where, where are you? Yeah, who are you going to replace him? I mean, where's he going to play? Sterling's getting pushed out of the squad. Oh, yeah. Sterling's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He took Chelsea out of his bio on the socials. He's done. Dude, I feel like that was one player we should have kept just because he's been there. He's done that. You need a player of his quality, of his stature, that knows what it takes to win. Like, I get it. Team's super young, everything. But I feel like that was just the wrong move. Even if he doesn't start, if he's if he's a super sub, that's the type of player you need. You want the players, the young players, to learn from him. Yeah, uh, you get four subs from Chelsea. Um, Jewsbury Hall comes on. Renato Viega, Pedro Neto, and Mark Gui. Uh, it's quite a bit of subs for sure. I mean, definitely want to mix up the squad when you got that many players. Uh, Man City, pretty fairly even squad. Um, you know. Nothing surprising outside of Rico Lewis, maybe, but you know Kyle Walker did have a heavy summer. Rodri just got back two days before the match; not wasn't going to play. Kovacic gets the start. De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, Rico Lewis, uh, Ruben Diaz, Gorvi Dahl, Akanji, Savinho or Savio. Well, a lot of people call him Savio. Gets the start. A little bit surprising in the first day. Uh, well, Jack Grealish has had a really good preseason, uh, but you know he also had a little bit of a of a slight injury in in the preseason. Nothing really major, but didn't touch the field. Only one sub used, which was Phil Foden, who also got back a few days before the match. Uh, he still got on the bench. Nico Riley, James McAtee, who was excellent for Sheffield in past seasons. Uh, Jack Grealish, Nathan Ake, John Stones, and Kyle Walker. Um, really liked what I saw with from Savio for sure. Unreal, unreal player it looks to be. Looks like he has a little bit what Doku doesn't have per se in terms of the pass after, after all the skill and such. Um, but he looks to take on players a little bit less than I guess what Doku would, in my opinion. And then Holland with a beauty dunk on Kukurea with the beauty dunk. And then Kovacic, I mean, against his former club, knew he had to step up. Absolutely has. And there's rumors of Ilkay Gundogan coming back. <laughs> uh, say no more. We need a Rodri backup. It'd be perfect. It's, he's in the later stages of his career. We know what he could do. We know he could deliver. He knows the system. Will Kovacic give him back the number eight? I don't know. But it's all like two, two nil oh. win. I wouldn't say dominance by Man City, but definitely nothing. Every time they lost the ball, they got it back. Really high press. Chelsea didn't really know what to do with it. I mean, they could, but then it just like felt like Cole Palmer was – by the time Cole Palmer was getting ready to do something, someone was already in front of him. He couldn't. And the chances that they did get from Nico Jackson, I mean, just talk about disgusting sense of urgency. I mean, Lord. 
Uh, it was quite disgusting, even though he was offsides a few times, both times, actually. Um, um, yeah, still. And even as a striker of his caliber, I mean, shouldn't be offsides. And he had no reason to be offsides on the on the goal that was disallowed due to offsides. He's like a fraction off. Yeah. If he just held his line just a little bit longer. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, positives for my, you know, for me and Chelsea. I mean, you could obviously have so many players. I feel like you can't really judge them. First of all, match day one and going up against the best team in the league, it's very, very hard to it's judge them. Uh, I definitely would want to see how they handle like a Forest, a Bournemouth, a Fulham. Oh, buddy, they got a a somewhat easy stretch of games coming up. There should be no reason why we don't take advantage of these games. Definitely. Yeah, but that's – I mean, that's what I'm saying. I want to see them play those teams, see if they could dominate because, I mean, there's a lot of teams in the world that are ball-heavy, ball-possession-heavy, but when you go up against, like, a Man City or maybe even, like, a Madrid or a PSG and stuff like that, you know, then, it kind of, like, you have to be the team that plays on the counter. And I felt like that's not Chelsea right now, but – I mean, who knows? We'll see. Yeah, and they got a they got a weekday game for Conference League qualifiers. Yeah. So let's see here. Let's move to today's game, Monday. As everyone knows, we record a day ahead. Man of the match, I believe, was Pedro Poro or Jamie Vardy. I believe. I'm not too exactly sure which one got it. But not surprising lineup from Spurs. Uh, I really liked, I really praised Brendan Johnson before the game, but I think he put up an absolute stinker, and they held him out so long for Kulusevsky. Kulusevsky provides something. I mean, he could play 10. He could play, you know, the wing. He could play almost anywhere. I feel like they really missed him. Didn't get the start at all. James Madison absolutely dominated the first half. Just cooked. I mean, absolutely cooked. Pedro Poro played unreal, too. Um, man, the Spurs squad looked almost dominant, almost like top five dominant in the first half, second half. I mean, we knew. We know with everything. I mean, any football match, there's going to be a spell where both teams go on a little bit of a run. But I felt like, Leicester's run shouldn't have lasted that long against a team that's so good. Tottenham, I mean, their defense is unreal. You have like a Rolls Royce defense in the back line. Uh, you doggy, Christian Romero, Mickey Van de Ven, and Pedro Poro. <clears throat> Quite unreal. Uh, Pedro Poro did come off with a little bit of an injury as well. Uh, Papesar played well. Bentecourt, unfortunately, I mean, looked like he got knocked out. Hopefully he's all right. Look to see him unconscious for a little while. Yeah, I was stretchered off. Um, Huming Sun played really well. Him and James Madison linking unbelievably well. They were dominating the left side of the pitch. Nothing from the right side almost, but Solanke had a good amount of chances. I didn't put one in the back of the net, but it seems like he, I mean, it seems like he shouldn't have any problem scoring there. Um, Very, very First half dominated by Spurs in the entirety of the game. They had 70% possession to Leicester's 29. They had seven shots on target, 15 total. Leicester had three and seven total. Let's move. Jamie Vardy gets the absolute great goal. Uh, the turn of Vardy. Vardy party. Yeah. Wasn't too necessarily an insane goal. 57th minute. He was wide open. They left him unmarked. He got an easy header. Wide open header, yeah. But the celebration, oh my gosh, it just brought me back. Coming out of half, he chugs a Red Bull. Football heritage. Football heritage. Uh, Decor- uh, Bobby Decor- De- DeCorva Reed played all right. I don't know. Not a, not the biggest fan. Uh, Harry Winks, you know. Just signed. Yeah, Oliver Skip just signed as well. Uh, he wasn't in the team sheet, but he was at the game. I believe he'll be starting. And I'm not too sure who he'll start for. I think it'd be the Corva de Cordova Reed though. Um Indeedy, Wilfred Indeedy played well, not insanely well. Uh Fatawu 
was a star last season for them. Didn't really get too many, but he did get the assists, and I thought they needed to play his side quite a bit more. Uh, Facundo Benonotti, that dude was unreal. Number 40 for Leicester. During the game, he was just the absolute workhorse, was the one that was being able to make the right passes, the one making quality passes, uh, while everyone else seemed to be uh, struggling a bit. Their defense is definitely where it lies, though. I think uh, where the issues are lying. Uh, Woot phase from Belgium. Um, I mean, disaster class for me. You know, just always felt like he didn't know what he was necessarily doing with the ball. Uh, but, I mean, we said Leicester, or you said Leicester, you know, could stay up, which they very well could. They look like it. They look like they deserved it in the times that they had. But I don't know. I mean, they're facing a potential point deduction. I mean, we saw glimpses, but they also got extremely dominated. So not really too sure my stance yet. But Jamie Vardy staying up would be nice. That's yeah, that's that'd be nice. And that's a one that a game ends in a one one draw from what the game Tottenham should have won. James so, Ramson against his old team. Yeah. Didn't celebrate on the assist that he got. Pedro Poirot did want him to do the dart throw, but he chose not to. I'm sure out of respect for the club. Um, hopefully Benton Core gets better. Posakoglu seemed very, very upset at the end of the game. Uh, Steve Cooper seemed to be excited at the end of the game. Love Steve Cooper as just as a fan. I mean, man, I love Steve Cooper. Absolutely gutted uh, when Forrest got rid of him. Um, but... You know, I also like Forrest's new coach as well. I mean, not on him. Uh, but we'll be back again. I mean, shoot, next week. I think after the first three weeks, I will have a maybe revised relegation list and maybe a revised top five uh, just because, I mean, I saw really quite a bit this first time around. Um, and I'm still looking to see more from teams maybe like Forrest. Uh, Everton as well. Want to see Leicester go up, you know, against a a mid table club. See if they can, can, you know, we saw them beat or not beat, but it felt like a win against Tottenham. But you know, can they consistently do it? Because a lot of teams can't. Uh, don't need to see any more from Arsenal. Arsenal are going to be a top side. Don't need to see more from City. Top side. Some good games next next weekend. Yeah. We'll be back for sure to talk about those on Friday. Um, but, yeah, it'll be a good one next season, or next weekend as well. Saturday, Sunday, match slate. We'll see what happens. But I'm excited. I mean, good good season. Good season coming up. I already had, like we said last episode, we'll have something crazy. We'll have, you know, just the unprecedented amount of things happen. Unfortunately, this week felt like just a horrific, unlucky week for new, uh, Danilo and Bentacur. Unfortunately, those were the you know most eventful things that happened, I guess you could say, along with Jamie Vardy's return. But I mean, I mean, we look to be back. We'll see what's next. Uh, next week, big big week again. Match day two. Super excited, and we'll be back on Friday. Any last thoughts? Martin Taylor, you have blood on your hands. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Hey, I wonder who uh, – actually, I heard that there was about four major uh, referees injured from the Premier League right now. I'm not too sure who they are, but uh, we saw Anthony Taylor this week. We saw – you know who we um, – I didn't see Simon Hooper at all this week. I don't know if he – Maybe he's one of the injured ones. Yeah, but I actually got to watch a couple of the games like live, quite a few of them actually. I saw the Manchester United one. Um, uh, I saw West Ham Villa. Uh, watched a majority Forest Bournemouth, but I did see some Newcastle Southampton. Saw the Arsenal match as well. Um, and then City City Chelsea didn't wake up for the totality of the Brentford Palace game but I did see the end of it and then Leicester Tottenham so quite a quite a really good I try to get as many as I can every week and 
definitely once I saw Brighton uh, pulling away, I was like, oh, I'm not going to watch that one. Yeah, I don't think we have any really, really early games next week. Maybe one. 4.30. Uh, United it's Brighton. a United match. Well, if I wake up and United have lost, start of a good day. <laughs> no. But, yeah, I mean, that's it. That's it for this week. Thank you, guys. Love, love, love if you got it this far. Appreciate it as well. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. We're on almost every social media right now. Definitely subscribe to our YouTube. That's the most important for us. Uh, we're also on TikTok, making some really good videos there. And uh, Instagram. Need to be a little bit more active, but we'll be there. That's all I got, Chooch. Match week one down. 38 more to go. All right, well, you guys have been kicking it with Gab. And Chooch. And Chooch. Banger.